All right, Anthony Lynn talking about the quarterback competition in L.A. Tyrod Taylor probably will be our day one starter. Justin Herbert, the sixth overall pick and a rookie out of Oregon, has to got to be ready to play. This is a year of a lot of uncertainty. Every player has to prepare and be ready to start. Him sitting out the whole year, that may not be the case. So we expect to see Justin Herbert at some point this year. Although Tyrod Taylor now has the best group around him I think he's ever had. Justin Herbert, a candidate for Offensive Rookie of the Year if he plays a significant chunk of the season. So let's draft the Offensive Rookie of the Year candidates for 2020. Chris, since I'm in such a good mood today, although circumstance is doing their best to interfere with that, I'm going to let you have the first pick. Wow, thanks there, Slugger. What a good guy you are. Okay. It's well, Friday for you. I'm giving you a little Friday nugget on the way out the door. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm going to start off with the guy we kind of started off talking on the show with today. I mean, yeah, Clyde Edwards Alaire is the guy that jumps out to me. There's no doubt. I mean, one, I thought he was the best running back coming out in the draft. He's super talented. And then when super talented meshes up with, whoa, system fit, and then other super talented guys around you, I just go, well, like the only thing we have to worry about is like, can they get him the ball enough times? Because they got so many damn good players. But I expect it to be, I'm, I'm going out on a limb and just going to go, I expect it to be better than Kareem Hunt and what we saw his, rook, his rookie year for the Kansas City Chiefs. I wow. think so I'm putting yeah, I'm putting myself out there. I think it's going to be a huge year for this guy. Well, and you throw in the Damian Williams opt out, which is the reason why we're doing this draft today. Yep. It creates an even greater opportunity for Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And that's always the first place I look for offensive rookie of the year. I look at running back mm -hmm. because running back has the if you if you are the guy and not every guy gets to be the guy right out of the gates, but if you are going to get a healthy complement of touches, you're more likely to generate the kind of statistics, touchdowns, notoriety, fantasy football love that's going to get those 50 AP voters attracted to you. And it almost happened last year with Josh Jacobs, the Raiders running back. He, you know, a lot of people still think he should have been the offensive rookie of the year over Kyler Murray. And I generally think a running back has a better opportunity, and yeah. I would have taken Clyde Edwards-Hilaire if I had kept the first pick for myself. So I'm a little torn here, but I'm not going to let you have Joe Burrow and Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, although I was <laughs> tempted to go in a different direction. I got to go with Joe Burrow. First overall pick, we saw what Kyler Murray did last year as the first overall pick. It's going to be a challenge in Cincinnati because of the division that they play in. But I think that if Joe Burrow can carry over just 80% of what he did at LSU last year, it's going to create enough buzz, enough excitement. He's got the help around him. If those guys can stay healthy, they yeah. can be a great group of receivers if they can stay healthy. Joe Mixon, sneaky great running back who hasn't had the benefit of a whole lot of blocking or a passing game to throw defenses off balance. That's right. That, that Cincinnati Bengals offense could be something. I don't know about the defense, but yeah. I think the offense could be something. No, I, I, I'm with you. You're right. I mean, they, they, they could be one of those teams that ends up like 6-10, and 10, but we go, man, like the 49ers a few years ago where we go, it was fun to watch every game. It was up and down the field and big plays and everything like that. And I think, you know, like you said, there's enough talent there. And with the way he plays and, and the plays he can make on his own too. Uh, I, I'm, I, it was, it was one of those two guys for me too. And I, you know, I'm not one that usually wants to take the first pick of the draft for these kind of things, but I, I think it sets up well for him, man. There are some really good guys out here to talk about. All right. I'm, I think um, next I'm going to go with Brandon Ayuk of the San Francisco 49ers, you know, and the reason I'm going to go with this here is Debo Samuel hurt broken foot here the last few weeks. Don't think he'll be ready to go or at least not full strength, hundred percent to start the year. You know, there's no Emmanuel Sanders there. And of course we know Shanahan, John Lynch liked this player a lot. Kyle's got a, a keen eye for the wide receiver position. You know, he's really special there. And I just think between the player, his offense, it, it's going to fit within his scheme. And, of course, with no Debo and Samuels there, I think there's a lot of balls that are going to go Ayuk's way, you know, especially early in the year, at least to get him going, why Debo might be still getting his feet underneath him. So I'm going to go with him just because of that offense, the team around him, and he's not a guy that they're necessarily going to be able to hone in on because there's a lot of talent on that offense. And uh, I think Shanahan's going to make life pretty easy for him. Yeah, I don't know. The team that went with the early 70s offense uh, when it could last year in the playoffs, running the ball, running the yeah. ball, running the ball. And my other concern is who's the guy that's going to draw the double coverage? I know. 
that makes it easier for Brandon Ayuk to get open. It's going to be Kittle. Who is that guy? It's going to be Kittle. Kittle will have to be the guy that Shanahan – yeah, you don't get double cover, coverage on a tight end a lot, so I know what you're saying. But it'll have to be Shanahan who will have a million plays for George Kittle, at least to take a little attention away from a guy like Ayuk, which is a very real question, Mike, no doubt. Well, and I raised those – questions for two reasons number one I want to undermine your pick of number course two, you I do. want to build up my pick right. because he's not a B he's CD CD yeah. lamb the Dallas Cowboys receiver who has Amari Cooper there to attract double coverage has the running game that is the great complement to the passing game with the quarterback in Dak Prescott who you put much higher on your top 40 list than Jimmy Garoppolo. Mike McCarthy is the head coach, dialing up those plays that give C.D. Lamb the opportunity with a high-profile team to come in and make a high-profile splash. You throw in that extra factor where he's going to have the chip on his shoulder because he was drafted after the Alabama receivers, Henry Ruggs III and Jerry Judy. I think this is all shaping up for C.D. Lamb to have a monster season, barring injury. Yeah. I think he could come in and be great, and it, and the star on the helmet's going to get more attention. You know, if he has the same production as Brandon Ayuk, the same catches, the same yards, the same touchdowns, C.D. Lamb's going to be viewed as having the bigger year because he's coming from that team that, that, that everything is bigger. No, I mean, listen, I was between Ayuk and C.D. Lamb. I, that's what I was doing. I went with Ayuk because of the reasons that you just said for CD Lamb. You know, I went with Ayuk because I'm going Shanahan, even though there might be attention on him, there's not enough guys on that offense. He'll get him the ball. Shanahan's a master at getting the Julio Jones, the Andre Johnsons of the world, the ball, when everybody knows they're going to get the ball. So that's why I went. That's what scared me off of CD Lamb. Like, you're right. It, to me, it can go either way. It can go, whoa, holy cow, look at the stats all over the place. But it also could go, damn, Amari Cooper, damn, Ezekiel Elliott runs the ball, damn, Michael Gallup had 1,100 yards receiving last year, and that would just scare me that some of his touches get taken away. So I'm doing what you're doing. I like your pick, but I also want to win the yeah. draft, and I'm just pointing out some negatives about it. Let, let me say this about your buddy Kyle Shanahan, too. Yeah. Because um, I think that part of his genius isn't just designing plays and getting guys open and cracking the code on the defense. I think now that he has his own team, I think we are going to see, and I don't know, I, I'm not saying that this is job number one. Job number one is score more points and win the game. But I think that his offense is set up in a way to prevent one guy from becoming the superstar who's going to command huge money. Sure. Right? So, I, 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 you know, you're not going to have a Julio Jones that's going to hold out and want $23 million a year with the 49ers. I think the ball is going to get spread around. It is, enough there's no doubt. That no one's going to have those gigantic numbers. So that's another reason why I, I was more So you're going back to just to throw one more that. negative thing on my pick before I no. make my other pick? I mean, what but a I'm, jerk I'm you trying are. To, <laughs> I'm trying to praise your buddy. Okay. I'm from the standpoint of yeah. not creating a, a giant major star that, that yeah, is going I hear to command you. all the money. All I right, let's you. take a break. We've got one round left. Chris gets to regroup now that I've got him on his heels. We'll do round three of the Offensive Rookie of the Year draft right after this on PFT Live. All right, as we continue with our draft Offensive Rookie of the Year candidate, Chris, you're on the clock. All right, I'm going Jonathan Taylor. You know, second round running back out of Wisconsin, who was a first round talent. I mean, stud. I mean, 230 pounds, runs 4 3, got the big blue wall because they built a wall in Indianapolis. He's going to have big holes. So, yeah, I'm going with Jonathan Taylor because he's got a lot there to support him. And then, of course, I think he is a hell of a football player. Yeah, you took my next pick, Good. although I've got one that I think has just the same chance to to make some noise and maybe be the offensive rookie of the year how about jk Dunn, i knew you were gonna back go out there. of ohio state yeah i know that his touches will be minimized by the presence of mark ingram and lamar jackson's going to be running the ball a lot on a designed basis but man that 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 was just a pick that that cemented in yeah. i think a lot of people's minds that the ravens are still going to be a major factor even though they can't win a playoff game jk dobbins is going to be a guy who comes in and makes a difference and transitions into that lead running back role when mark ingram moves on chris yeah I, i'm with you like i mean you know he might be the guy you're right not a ton of yards and like a ton of touches but a lot of long highlight touchdown game changing type runs and that could win you rookie of the year so i could see jk dobbins doing that for sure all right, one more quick break. When we return, a player who signed a big contract in the offseason, relatively speaking, 
uh, has gone AWOL. We'll tell you who it is and when and if he's going to show up when PFT Live continues right after this. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.